Right, we're back again then. Um, sticking with the uh, sort of recent videos that I've been doing about uh, scan lines, etc., and showing things on LCD screens, you know, current gen screens, and also uh, images of what they're supposed to look like if they're displaying a CRT screen, uh, low res. Um, I thought I'd start to go in a bit more detail now. They're sort of going back to basics. Got a few requests from uh, fellow YouTubers to actually uh, give a bit of sort of background info on um, on actually what scan lines are. I know you've seen scan lines on my videos, but I've never actually explained in detail what a scan line is, or what we refer to as being scan lines, uh, what we see, and why we try to achieve that. And I suppose really why why they're displayed as such on on a um, on a CRT screen, a low res screen, and why we can't get that natively on an LCD uh, plasma screen, uh, HD type screen, really, and what the difference is between the two types of technologies and what and what causes one to look like it does against another one that looks totally different as regards to the change between. Uh, sort of standard def or low res up to high def. Um, I'm going to try and not get too bogged down with a lot of detail. It's difficult because it is it is all about being technical. Not all about being technical, but there's things you've got to understand. So I can't really show you show you screenshots or videos of this. I've just got to sit here and just waffle really for 20 minutes or whatever, but, but we'll see how we get on as we go. Um, uh, before I start, I've actually just uh, put an order in uh, yesterday actually for a new line doubler, scaler, which I will do a review of, and it will complement the SLG 3000 quite well, and it's a cheap device, it's about 50 pound. So I'm gonna see how I get on with that, and I will do a review on that, and I'll actually explain in more detail what a scalar and line doubler is um, and it will follow on quite nicely actually from what I'm going to be talking about here so anyway let's get back to basics let's start off with explaining uh, why you get scan lines well if you if you take a standard TV, a standard CR type TV, so the old, the old type of, of TV technology that we all uh, grew up with, and for some strange reason we all want to get back to replicate as regards to the way the games look, but that's obviously all part of the other videos I've done. Um, a basic CRT TV, you know, your normal uh, everyday TV set. was built to display around 480 lines of, um, of graphic, image, whatever you want to call it. Now, I say roughly 480 because 480, so this is uh, 480 of the horizontal lines across the screen, sorry. So you've got 480 of these lines across the screen. Now when I say roughly, there is a slight difference to that as regards to things like PAL, where PAL actually has, has more lines in that signal uh, transmission. But we'll just stick to 480 because you'll see where this comes in and, and, and how it makes sense. But 480 was the was NTSC um, uh, number of lines, of horizontal lines. Uh, but if I stick to that, you'll understand a bit better what I'm trying to get at. If you look at a, a PlayStation 1, which is low res, it's a low res console, and all the games on the PlayStation 1 that I know of, in fact they all are, yeah, I mean, that's fact, that's fact. So the fact is that all games on a PlayStation 1 only actually display 240 lines. Um, now, uh, you probably think, well, how does it display 240 lines on a CRT TV, on a CRT TV that was meant to uh, display 480? Well, if you think that's a, that's actually 
a straight division by two. So in theory, you can actually fit, you know, you can fit two lots of 240, uh, which is PlayStation One uh, horizontal lines, into a 480 CRT uh, image, uh, available image. And what a scan line is, is that it's a black line, and there's no graphic on there at all. So what the TV does is to enable the uh, the image to be displayed from a PlayStation 1 because if it only displayed 240 uh, lines and they were all next to each other then the, and then the image would be half as high in effect be half as big, half as high so what CRT does is that it, uh, the signal actually includes alternate black lines I think they're odd uh, black lines, which is what your scan line effect is. So even though the PlayStation 1 is outputting a 240 line signal, it's effectively being doubled so it fits full screen on a CRT uh, TV. And that's why you get scan lines. So, that's a very, very brief um, sort of explanation of what the scan lines are and why you see them on a screen, on a CRT screen. Now, the reason why you don't see them on a, on a HD screen, LCD, plasma or so forth, is because of the total difference in technology. A, a normal uh, CRT screen is actually an interlaced picture. A, a LCD or a plasma HD screen is progressive and basically what the TV does is it converts the image so it converts, it scales it so uh, whatever signal that you output from sorry, whatever signal you feed it so, so, so let's go back to the original PlayStation 1 so you plug PlayStation 1 into an LCD screen it sees the signal, it says oh, hold on, it's only 240 lines a video signal and it says whoa right okay I'm going to change this now and it scales it to the resolution that you have uh, chosen for the screen or what the native resolution of the screen is um, so uh, you don't get the black scan lines because it automatically takes that 240 line image and just expands it to the size of the screen or whatever ratio that you set it to on the screen if you've got that facility uh, within that HD screen. So that's why you don't get uh, scan lines on, on an LCD screen without actually forcing scan lines via some form of emu um, sorry some form of emulation, whether that's uh, by hardware or software. So it doesn't matter what you do, you won't get that PlayStation 1 image to natively have scan lines because the TV will get clever, it gets clever. Now, um, in the eyes of a retro game, it, it doesn't actually get clever because it, like, because it scales the image, it may not scale it very well, so you get a blurry image, you lose the scan lines, and generally it just looks naff really on a low resolution picture. You know, in this case, on a 240 lined image, it looks absolutely crap. Uh, something else worth explaining as well to give you a bit of inside information and to give you the reason why you get this on some games. Um, I can't remember uh, the types of games off the, or, or specific games off the top of my head, but, but there have been games that have been released for the Super Nintendo, for instance, that were released as a PAL game. But they work correctly at video encoded to take advantage of the extra lines that are available on a PAL, on a PAL uh, signal. So what you got on some games um, uh, was actually borders, uh, top and bottom borders. And that was solely because uh, the video uh, game mode was meant to be shown on an NTSC uh, display uh, signal which is 480 horizontal lines and the PAL uh, signal is actually f I can't remember off the top of me exactly what it is 500, 526 or something like that I can't remember 
but it's more than 480. So of course what it did, it could only display, it, it would take the 240, it would double it in effect up to 480, and then you would have uh, top and bottom borders. And that's why on some games, uh, you got the top and bottom borders. It was because the developers never reprogrammed the game to give extra lines of video to give it full screen. Um, so again, that just goes back to what I was saying before about the different uh, number of lines really between a PAL, a PAL signal and an NTSC signal, and that that explains uh, why on some PAL games, and there wasn't many of them, but there were some PAL games that uh, weren't actually full screen, and it was because they never bothered to rejig the uh, the video uh, display mode or make the graphics. Um, uh, specific to the as uh, the region that they were going to be played in, uh, because of the slight differences in the video formats. So that's why you get the borders. Um, so that's a very brief um, uh, sort of insight really to what scan lines are and why you get scan lines, and and also briefly why you can't get them on a on a modern display. Uh, something else you've got to think about as well, or appreciate, fortunately is because the actual displays that we have nowadays, they are digital. You know, everything's digital now about LCD and plasma. And even though you feed it an analog signal, which could be SCART RGB, could be super video, could be just normal play composite, and the TV's got to convert that to a digital signal. And it does that with its inbuilt uh, gubbins that it's got in the TV. And various uh, TVs uh, will do it better than what others uh, TVs will do it um, uh, normally. Normally, the more you spend on a brand or a TV, the better the sort of internal scaling is. Um, but uh, but regardless of that, they are all pretty naff to be honest. Some are, you know, like I said, some are better than others. Um, Something's interesting as well as regards to looking at various things to do with scaling and. Um, and deinterlacing etc is to do with uh, PlayStation th uh, 3 funny enough if you've got a PlayStation 3 and you put in a, and you put in a, a PlayStation 1 game because it has the the um, and the facility within the PlayStation 3 uh, via software to rescale the image you get a, an absolute pin sharp image of a PlayStation 1 game playing on an LCD even um, you don't get scan lines obviously but you don't get any blurring everything seems to be pixel perfect everything's matched perfectly it does it really really well in it and for PlayStation 1 games it will be the best method to play those games on a current gen display by using the PlayStation 3 because the way that it is able to uh, via software able to mit sorry, manipulate that picture to get it to display correctly or not correctly compared to what it should be like on a, on a PlayStation 1 on a CRT but certainly as regards to crispness of the, of the image it, it, is, it is absolutely mint so if anyone there if anyone out there has got a PlayStation 3 and you've got original PlayStation 1 game if you bang it in you'll see it's absolutely crystal clear and that's because of the of the process you go through the PlayStation 3 to actually convert that image uh, via software to actually display correctly or the best way on um, uh, on a modern display. Something that that's worth explaining, uh, not in great detail, but again just to give you a bit of background, is the technology of CRTs and how they vastly uh, differ to something like an LCD or plasma. Um, okay, take CRT. Um, CRT is based on on a glass tube, and it's got a neck on that tube, and on that on that neck of the tube, the back of the tube, uh, uh, three guns, uh, three phosphor guns, or phosphorus guns, red, green, and blue. So it's work, it, it works with those three colours and it uses those three colours to obviously mix and, and make whatever colour it needs uh, to actually display. 
Now basically, it fires out electrons from these guns that hit the that hit the screen on the inside. And and you can get all sorts of issues with CRTs, and I'll probably do something on this in the future, but you get issues with convergence and geometry, and you don't get any of that at all with a digital display like plasma or or LCD. Because everything is very precise on an LCD plasma, it's it is a pixel. You can um, basically a, bit, a an LCD or plasma will will actually do something to a individual pixel on the screen. It will change the colour of it. And because that pixel is a perfect square, should be, it's absolutely pin sharp. And there's no airy fairiness about it. And this is why on on some images that you'll see in LCDs and plasmas is that they look very artificial um, too sharp in some instances um, uh, but with a CRT tube because you've, been, you've basically got these three guns that fire uh, from the back of the tube and because the process to actually make the tubes uh, was never actually that precise uh, you got these guns firing and you could have uh, the guns could be slightly off now you probably wouldn't see that with the naked eye but if you get close to a screen if you do get close to a CRT screen you've got a test card up you can see lots sort of halo effects around a character where you can see a slight redness to the side of a character or something like if you've got I don't know say you've got a a blue a blue X on the screen on a CRT tube and you can probably see a bit of um, well not blue because blue fire blue so let's not choose blue let's say green green will be a mix of blue and yellow it's red green and blue so it won't be <laughs> Yellow, we'll say yellow, oh God, I don't think you know me mix of primary colours here. We'll say yellow. Yellow will be a mix of blue and be a mix of green. And if those guns aren't perfectly lined up, then you'll get a slight overlap of one of the guns. So perhaps around a character, say an X for instance, is you might see a bit of a bit of green on the side of it or or even a bit of blue. Um, you get all sorts of inaccuracies and part of that as well is to actually soften the image and it's all part of the technology um, so again when you're looking at retro consoles uh, displayed on a CRT tube is strange enough you try to uh, replicate on you know buying various gadgets add-on things etc like the SLG 3000 or whatever you look at getting it's trying to replicate that poor image because that's actually what it is in effect it's a technology blunt well, not a blunder but it's the way the technology works and you couldn't get around it you know some CRTs are better than others you can get uh, good quality ones you get bad quality ones but underlying you still got that technology and it it just seems a bit strange that nowadays we're actually trying to emulate that because we believe that that's the way that it should be displayed for certain types of input. So again, that uh, that's a very brief overview, really, of the of the different forms of technology between you know current gen displays, excuse me, and CRT displays. Um, well, one last thing I want to cover on this video is to look at. Uh, differences between interlaced picture and a progressive picture. So again, if we go back to the start, I mentioned the fact that that we're talking about 480 horizontal lines here, and and a CRT tube, a normal uh, standard definition, low resolution, what you want to call it, uh, CRT tube, um, is actually uh, there to display 480 lines uh, interlaced. And what happens if you get a game on on a PlayStation 2, for instance, and it's been remarked on a couple of videos, that if you take something like, let's say, Gradius 5, that actually displays 480 lines of of video. What it does is it's a proper 480i uh, image on that game, it's not 240p, so it's not low res, what I would call low res, it's 480i, which is, I, I don't actually know what that's called to be honest, whether it's actually classed as high res or not, but certainly as regards to the number of lines it, 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 uh, it provides, it is. Now what it does, to enable it to do 480 lines on the screen that you see, it, um, 
it does it by uh, displaying um, uh, the lines each line is one frame each frame is one thirtieth of a second now uh, 240 uh, low res is one sixtieth of a second per frame so what it does it basically halves it and this is the reason why on a 480i image you will see slight flicker you'll also see slight scan lines if you look very closely and what it is it's basically the image alternating very very quickly to get that 480 lines it, it, it has to alternate very quickly and that's where you see the flicker come into effect on 480i signals so again going back to Gradius 5 that's why on certain parts of Gradius 5 when you get the menu come up or, or even when you even when you turn your PlayStation 2 on because natively it's 480i that's its native resolution on the PlayStation 2 and you'll see on the on the control panel when it comes up with the logo uh, PlayStation that you'll see flickering you'll get you'll get very fast very fast very fast flickering and it's because it's doing that alternate line uh, debris and and if you look very close you can just see the scan lines because basically it's the 240 image but it's alternating to get the 480 and just very quickly and that's why you get the slight flickering so that's the reason why you do get the flickering now if you move then on to a 480p image which is progressive scan which normal CRTs can't do it's got to be a it, it, it needs to be a high def uh, CRT which they do exist uh, plenty of them existed in America um, and not so much over here in the UK but a progressive scan um, uh, display is all 480 lines all at once one frame every one sixtieth of a second so that's why if you look at Dreamcast for instance you get the finer level of detail because you're displaying all 480 lines all at one go on a Dreamcast, if you've got it in VGA mode, sorry, if you're using it in VGA mode, which is basically progressive 640 by 480 signal, and that's why you don't get any flicker on the Dreamcast by a VGA, even even on a CRT. As um, I don't think I've actually done any proper videos of that one, but if you plug it into uh, into a normal into a normal CRT monitor, uh, Super VGA monitor or something like that. Um, uh, you don't get any flickering and you get a better resolution because you're actually filling in all the lines you get no scan lines but every single line is meant to be there so you get better gradation better resolution it looks a lot sharper you get more detail so that's the difference then between 480i PlayStation 2 for instance and 480p which is Dreamcast on VGA so in short that sort of sums up all of the sort of retro based consoles as regards to their display methods and and why you get various things on some displays rather than others sorry and why you get some effects on some uh, video modes compared to others um, I could keep on going about this for years and years and years I'm sure I could but again uh, like with any previous videos if there's any specific uh, item that I've discussed that you want me to go into further detail drop me a message or, or send me a comment on the video and I'll do my utmost to uh, make a video on it for you hope you enjoy it thanks for watching